And before we get into the uh, Kroger video, I would like to make a public apology. For the whole of the video, we've got his name spelt wrong in the background and on the Twitter handle. I'm not going to blame names, but I'm going to fight the person that's done it. Um, so yeah, just to confirm, Kroger's actual Twitter handle is at Kroger, which is K-R-I-E-G-E-R um, UK. So that's K-R-I-E-G-R-U-K and not the way we've had it for the whole video and I've only just noticed in editing. Anyway, the interview's good though. Hello everyone and welcome back to the HCW YouTube channel. My name is Rate Wrestle and today is another UK Indie Spotlight. And um, we have travelled up north a bit. We're normally stuck in the Midlands and London, um, but we've actually gone to Scotland for this one. Um, and we've got Kroger on. How are you doing? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. Thanks for having me. No, I've actually, you won the first, uh, it's weirdly enough you won the first people wanted to get on. Um, okay. Like, a weird backstory, which I didn't tell you until now. Um, right. Have you heard of a game called TW? Um, it's like a, re it's like uh, a yes. management wrestling Yes, yes um, I have. I brought you on TW and you were like one of these people that kind of boosted my roster extremely well and that's how I suddenly heard right, okay. about you. I don't know how oh, it happened. I'll be <laughs> oh, that's going right, that's going right on my CV. I want to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's suddenly, um, and I was like, I probably should start watching this guy. And that's where we come <laughs> from now. <laughs> um, so for people that are not familiar with the series, we pretty much this is kind of a this is your life rip off. Um, so we go from how you got into wrestling to where you are now. Um, so how what's your kind of your first memory of uh, like wrestling in general, like um, watching it? Um... Uh, so I'd always been, I'd always, I'd always been a sort of massive wrestling fan. Obviously, I think MD that does wrestling is just a wrestling fan that took it a wee bit yeah. too far. Eh? Yeah. Um, and um, it was me and my big brother with those sort of set up and watched Raw and SmackDown and stuff. More we, um, the sort of earliest kind of memories is probably the feud with Triple H and Foley. Yeah. Um, see when they ended up the feud where. Triple H ended up married, not fully, sorry, Triple H and Vince, where um, he married Stephanie and all that. Um, and since then, I was just hooked. And it's constantly just been growing up during that attitude era. Do you know what I mean? You're hooked yeah, on the characters. Yeah, uh, I mean, you go back and watch it now, and it's, it's maybe not yeah, it's the best wrestling in the world, sense. but the characters are just, I guess that's what that's what got me hooked anyway. Yeah, and no, like, the attitude era was incredible, like, the, especially the characters. Like, um, because I, as I said, rate I rate Ratchet and stuff, and I've been going through the pay per views. And like you get yeah. to like nineteen ninety eight, and you have like Gold Dust, but like it's <laughs> the artist formerly known as Gold Dust, and he's wearing yeah, like, yeah. pink and got, <laughs> um, insanity. Uh, um, uh. <laughs> so, um, when when did you decide like that would be something you wanted to try and take? Um, so I, so I started training when I was about eighteen. So you're talking, well, that's maybe about eleven years ago now. Yeah. Um, so I started training. I was at uni. I was studying to be a primary teacher, um, <laughs> and I just, I, I didn't like it. I did not like it at all. And I was like, what would I want to be <laughs> when I grow up, <laughs> if I wasn't an adult at 18? But what would I want to be? And I was like, what would be a wrestler? So went on and Googled and managed to find, again, just lucky. I don't, I don't know one of these stories about I travelled 300 miles to train or anything. I literally I tra I travelled like 15 minutes. There was a school, luckily there was a school very close to me, and I thought, may as well give it a try. And I've not looked back since. Okay. And what was that? Was that P a PBW? Was that yeah, was, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. So so I, tra I went to the Airdrie School, and that was sort of TJ Rage that was my sort of head trainer. Um, TJ doesn't really get as much credit. He's, he's not sort of as out there as much in terms of name-wise, um, but TJ sort of uh, just like TJ trained Kenny Williams, trained Daz Black. Um, so TJ's TJ's got a good track record for the guys he brought through. Um, and he was still at this day sort of probably the biggest influence on my on my wrestling. Okay, and what were kind of training was it like? It was it like a proper ring training? Was a lot of match training? Um, no, no. So so we don't um we never had a ring at training. Yeah. Um, that was that was one of the big shocks when I first walked in because like. In my head, I was expecting to walk in and it's like a performance centre. Um, and I, I, I walked in a, um, a sports centre yeah. that just, just had like, it was like doing PE at school. You had crash mats, you had yeah, wee sort of judo mats, like that. Yeah. mats, you know what I mean? Um, and it was, 
it was a, a real reality check. Um, TJ's training, TJ's training was really good. He TJ's really really good at getting you sort of show ready. Yeah. Um, the, the sort of basics and stuff. TJ's brilliant at that. Um, the fundamentals. Um, TJ sells a personal trainer, so it, the fitness side of things was quite. Um, I found it quite challenging to start with. Um, but it's stood you in good stead. Yeah, and look, um, obviously, um, so from what I learned, um, getting body slammed on a PE mat, um, it kind of makes yeah. the ring feel like a cloud. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's kind of it's kind of helped as well. Like, I would, by no stretch of the imagination, would I describe myself as a technical wrestler. Yeah. Um, but we do kind of have it's got it's got its advantages and disadvantages. But I guess we are the coming out of that school. You're quite um. Like, should anything go wrong, like God forbid the rope snaps or whatever, um, we would be okay. Yeah, so you knew you could catch yourself. Or catch yeah, your you kind of basics. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, I've been most of uh, the time. I kind of use cage match to uh, to uh, figure out yeah. uh, career patterns. So this like some of it might be recorded and stuff, and you'll have to uh, pick me up on it. Yeah. Um. And what's nice about um like getting yourself on is most people know about ICW. Um. But yeah. uh, anyone further down, like they probably won't know much about PBW and so forth. Yeah. So yeah. It'd be nice to get your opinion. Yeah. Up. Um. Yeah. So debut wise, according to this, you had a you were debuted in an eight man tag. Uh, I did, yeah, I did. Um, so they, so the training school used to do, don't do it anymore. They used to do like, like academy attack shows. Um, so it was basically family and friends shows, and it was all the trainee guys that would go on it, and you would maybe have one experienced guy in each match. Yeah. Um, so I think I was actually quite lucky. I think I had a few experienced guys in mine. Um, I think TJ was in mine. Yeah. In fact, I'm pretty sure TJ was in mine and Sakiba Lee as well. Yeah, I've got I here. Think guys. Um... Alex Draven, Kieran yep. Class, Eddie Sunburns, oh, yeah. and Siki yep. Valley, uh, yep. versus yourself, Dave Krojcik. Krojcik. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, TJ Rage and Craig Damon. Yeah, yeah. I, there's a few, a few blasts for the past. Yeah. <laughs> um, I um, so no, um, they, they were they were always good shows. Um, sort of again, we were lucky debuting the sort of family and friends shows. They're the sort yeah. of crowds. That, even if you're rotten, they're going to stick with you and give you a wee bit of encouragement, which I think you needed on your first show. Because if it was, if you'd done poorly and the crowd ate you up, I don't know if you'd come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how did you think that went? Like um, the nerves and so forth. Um, I was really nervous. I remember being really, really nervous. Um, but I think I think it went okay. Um, the wrestling gear that I'd ordered didn't come in time, <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I had to wrestle and. One of TJ's singlets and MD, like, and TJ is about three times the size of me. I had to wrestle on one of TJ's singlets and somebody's, I can't remember who else, somebody else's old school, like, pleather trousers. <laughs> so I must have looked like one of the worst creator wrestlers going. But <laughs> apart, so, that, so that added to the nerves. But apart from that, I think it went okay. No, that's not bad. You know, that was in 2014. Um, yeah. So yeah, you had a few more matches. Like you were in a lot of uh, tag team matches, uh, which I'm guessing is the way they kind of brought you up um, first, not yeah. throwing you into a singles match. Yeah. Um, but you have like a few who's who's here. You got like Davy Blaze, I can see, um, Emily Aiden, and obviously um, quite early on in your career, a man that's um, there for a lot of it, uh, Luke King Sharp. Um, yeah. You had a t- tag team match up in 2015. Um, and then you um you branched out to a place called RNW. RNW. Yeah, I don't know if that's the. Let me see. What the, um, the exact rock and wrestle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. I've, um, yeah, rock and wrestle. That was up sort of Inverness way. Um, they were they were really good shows. Um, so that was the the guy that was running that. He was um, uh, he was like a sort of music events. Yeah sort of promoter um, and that's what you try to do we kind of try and mash the two of them together um, so it was quite cool like you had um, in between like the second last match and the last match you had like live music performances um, I was gutted because I was hoping it was going to be like big Wrestlemania entrances <laughs> but <laughs> sadly, sadly it wasn't but they, no they were always really good shows it's always good when you can get a sort of wee wee road trip and get to make a day of it so they were enjoyable yeah, and like, um, like it sounded like a good concept to be fair. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And then like this match as well, like um, there's pretty much a huge zoo in there as well. So you Joe Hendry, um, you were tagging with, um, and it was yourself, Joe Hendry, Saki, but again, and Donny T. Um, yep. And you ended up losing against Bobby Roberts, Joey Legend, Luke King Sharp again, and uh, Noam Dar randomly that was in there. Yeah. So you know, that's I know, not bad. I know. Aye, there, there was always there was always all sorts up there. Like I remember he brought it Colt Cabana and that up. Um, he quite often had quite a few imports, so it was quite a quite a stacked show. More and somehow I ended up on them. I don't, I don't yeah. know that. But, but that's, that's um, not bad. Yeah, like, I, know, uh, I know. And it's just really it's to realise because obviously all you mainly know about OCW, so just seeing where people have come from. Like you see, there's no Andar randomly on the show as well yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> Um, so then you, I, from what I can see, you're wrestling for PB, a PBW for a lot of the time. Um, yeah. The first singles match you can see here, I don't know if this is correct, um, with Davey Blaze. I don't know if you had one prior um, to that. No, I, I'll be honest, I would be lying if I say I could remember. Um, I think, see I, see, I was really, really, really lucky when I was first breaking through because, like, um, the majority of the singles match I had, um, Sort of either on the shows or I, I sort of again I was lucky I think it was because um obviously I knew, I, I knew how we sort of build yeah. the ring and stuff but um I ended up with the all star runs quite early hmm. um and it was so that regularly I was wrestling guys like the sort of guys you mentioned that I was mentioning like uh, B T Gun and Stevie yeah. Stevie Boy a lot yeah. you know what I mean and it's like it was really sort of without that sort of experience early on I don't think I would be where I am just now um, because guys like the guys I was lucky enough to get in with early on they were just if you can't get a good match out of them you should probably just sell your boots I'd imagine Um, but yeah, it's just like I yeah, said, we're seeing the names through this. Um, then we move on to like 2016, you were kind of debuting for a bit more, a few shows. So, um, there's a place called SSW, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were really good as well. They were, so they had a wee sort of tie in with, uh, with the training school, yeah. Um, so they had worked out for everybody. Obviously, it brought their cost down a wee bit, but it gave us, and they run every month. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a massive shows, but. It was giving us sort of semi regular chances in front of a crowd. Um so again, it was just the sort of stuff that um you need to try and get a feel for what works, what doesn't work. So they were that that was quite a um that was quite a good part of sort of the very start of my career because I was I ended up winning the tag titles with a guy called Matt Tyson. Um and like still he's one like outside the wrestling, he's still one of my, my really good friends. Yeah. Um and that was just that was just good fun. Um, really enjoyed that. Yeah, look, um, that was my next question. Up, um, so obviously you uh you won the tag titles. Um, you were called Trinity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was me, Matt Tyson, and Emily Hayden. Um, I never actually lost the tag titles. I couldn't make a show, so they had Matt and Emily dropped the titles, so if anybody asks, I'm still technically the SSW Tag Team Champion. Yeah, I've noticed a lot with the people I've interviewed. Most of the time, people don't lose the titles. <laughs> it's just they've had to vacate them, or Cage Max didn't even realise, and you're champion for about 5,000 days without no one realising. But prior to that as well, um, your first tag title match I could see, this was for PBW. Um, you, um, I don't know if this was your first title match uh, this time. You uh, thought it was yourself and Luke King Sharp. Um, versus Grado and Kenny Williams. Yeah. Um. So, I think I can't remember if we wrestled day two before we won the title because we won the titles off. Um, you did, yeah. Kenny and Grado. Um, but they're they're sort of that, that's just good funny to wrestle guys like that. And obviously, Lou, like, me and Lou, Lou's one of my best mates. So. And Lou's sort of taught me a lot in wrestling as well. I know Lou's younger than me, but Lou's been wrestling a good bit yeah. before me. Um, so he sort of been able to tag with him consistently and sort of either learn from talking to him about stuff or learn from sort of obviously having the best seat in the house to watch him um, is good. And obviously wrestling guys like Grado and Kenny, again, it's um, the sort of experience you would kill for. MD wrestling Grado, it's it's an experience, it's brilliant. Um and obviously Kenny, everybody knows Kenny's incredibly talented, so 
it, it, it's a good experience to get in there and again try and I'm not saying I ever got to that the guys level, but to try and raise yourself to that level is obviously a good challenge and a good learning experience. Yeah, as you said, it's like it's early on to get to wrestle that kind of that talent. Yeah, so, um, it can only get will go well, um, and especially as you said, Luke King Sharp, like to be a tag team like nearly seven years plus. You know, uh, that's, yeah. my, that's my favourite kind of tag teams, the ones where they're not like they've just lasted. Um, people like yeah. the Brothers, for example. Um, yeah, like, tag teams like fifteen years. Um, but yeah, so yourself, um, Trinity, I looked it up. Um, so you had the total for 147 days, um, which is not mm. a bad total run for a uh, yeah. first tag team total yeah. run. Um, yeah. And then um, that year as well, like a big thing, obviously, well, it would be for me because that's the main. Um, you debuted for ICW. Yeah, um, yeah. So when I initially debuted for ICW, I didn't debut with Lou. I yeah. initially debuted, it was a. Uh, so they done like. Uh, I guess probably the best way to describe it is they done almost like an ICW equivalent to NXT. Yeah. Um, where they sort of had guys that were kind of knocking on the door. They gave them a wee chance to see what worked, what didn't work. Um, and it was me and TJ against the Purge. Um, and then, which is funny, because then obviously like my first two years in ICW, it was me and Lou against the Purge. Um, but again, that was brilliant to get to that stage with the guy that had sort of trained me and the guy that had sort of, like, I wouldn't have got to that level without him. But uh, again, it was brilliant. Um, match itself um, probably could have been better, but um, it was it was a, a good experience. Um, it was, it was, um, and again, that's the sort of thing that kind of right throughout my whole time in wrestling, it's, like, I, I got stuff really quick. Yeah. Um, and I know how lucky I was with that. I think it's just right place, right time. Um, I was lucky for that because I like I debuted in, like you said, twenty fourteen. And what what were what were we talking there? Was that uh, twenty sixteen? Maybe sixteen um, November. So it's probably like two years straight after your uh, debut. So like to go straight uh, to like the be all type of ICW. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know that was. Um, it was lucky. It was lucky, and I, I, I know how lucky I was to get that as early as I did. No, definitely. Like, um, obviously, you haven't looked back, really. <laughs> it's the, um, yeah. pretty much a mainstay. Um, so, for that, um, you did pick up the PW, uh, PW, yeah, PBW tag titles, as you discussed. Um, so, yourself and Luke King uh, beat Grado and Kenny Williams. And I've wrote here, which is in stranger. You kept these titles for the, it seemed like decades. It looks like it was. Um, from what I've wrote here, let me just go the. Uh, it was like nine hundred days. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is... So, um, I, I still, I still argue that we've got the longest title reign. I think technically we lost it, but that was that's including COVID. Yeah, so COVID don't count. That, noise, yeah. Um, but I that was um I, that, that was brilliant. Um, again, it was um. We were consistently going in with some of the best teams that there was. Um, but even before that, like me and Lou, we were lucky enough to we managed to wrestle Noam in his last PBW match. Uh, that match we actually managed to wrestle Noam and Lionheart in that match. Um, again, you mentioned we were wrestling Grado and Kenny. We were main, we were wrestling Kieran Kelly and Craig Anthony. Um, kind of who's who is Scottish talent at the time. Yeah. Um, we were getting to wrestle them. Um, and again, me and Lou were kind of quite early on. So so me and Lou had never planned to be a team. We kind of got put together because yeah. at the time our, our characters and that were quite similar. I guess they still are now. Um, and it just sort of clicked. And we quite early on realised that if we ever wanted to... Like, we both realised that if we ever wanted to kind of try and crack on and really make noise in wrestling, like, realistically, our best chance of that is as a team. Um, so we just kind of went head on into it and the fact that we had at least one promotion that was running with it and really giving us, like they were giving us good positions, they were putting us in main events and stuff yeah. and really letting us sort of branch out, so that was brilliant. Yeah, and I said like you, um, from some of the people you defended them against, um, you got Grado on air, um, Chris Ridgeway must have been vodka uh, yeah, yeah. himself, yeah. Um, Kenny Williams, um, just like so many wrestlers, <laughs> just who was both yeah. wrestling, and then you ended up losing them to Igen, um, Craig yeah. Anthony and Kieran Keller. Um, yeah, but yeah, you know, you definitely have to say yours is the longest room because COVID doesn't get yeah. wrestling wise. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I agree. 
I agree. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then you started debuting. There's a lot, a lot of debuts you can see via this for uh, places like GP, AWA, and WrestleZone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, it, obviously, you're branching out a lot, um, and it's like it's good to see because obviously, as I said, from a, a UK like a, someone from England, you don't know much about these companies. So it's good to go on and look through your career and then see what's going on with the companies. Yeah. Um, so you debuted for GPWA um, where you were in a tournament um, so that's not bad to start yeah. off with um, yeah. so you um, defeated Danny Cantrell I think this is Yep. and yep. then you lost to Kieran McComb yeah that was a thing that, again that, that tournament was a really cool idea that was um, so they done so GPWA is um, or it, it's the promotion that's tied to the asylum training school okay um, so they done like a, they done like a, an asylum invitational, and I think they had, can't mind the numbers off the top of my head, but I think maybe they had three people from sort of each of the main training schools in the central belt. Yeah. Uh, like Source, PBW, um, SWA. No, I'm forgetting who's who. Sorry. Um, but um, so that was a, that was a cool idea. Um, and again, it was because it was tied to the asylum. It had people like. Dallas and that there, yeah. So again, that played a big part in giving so guys like even there like myself. So after debuting at ICW, um, I wasn't there again for maybe a year, a year and a half or something. Um, but then you had a, a tournament like this where you could get eyes on you. Same with guys like Arneko. He maybe just yeah. started getting his foot in the door at ICW at that point. A bit more regular than me, but he was there. Kieran McComb ended up being Kieran Kelly. He was there for a long time. Um, there's a lot of other guys um, that sort of come up through that as well. Um, so that was a, and as far as I'm aware, that was a sort of red lightning idea. Um, I think that was him that booked that tournament. Um, and it did, it really sort of benefited most of the people in it. Yeah, it's always good, like, especially if you can expand going around uh, more and more. Um, I need to pay attention to that. So we've got 10 minutes left of this Zoom call before I have to call you back. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> so if you suddenly disappear, I know that's the reason. Um, and then WrestleZone, um, you you were straight into a um, Tri-Counties title match. It looks like um, that's what it's yeah. called here. Yeah. Um, yourself versus Aspen Faith and Aaron Echo again. Yeah. Um, so that's not bad to debut in. <laughs> I know, I know. Re- Wrestle zones are real, like not not in Scotland. Like I, I think they get the credit that they're, they're due in Scotland, but sort of UK wise, I think Wrestle zones are a bit of a hidden gem. Like yeah. Wrestle have massive shows. Like, I remember at one point we had um, like I managed to have a tag match against Grado and Santino Morella somehow, which was amazing. <laughs> but like it was like you're talking like maybe anywhere between five and seven hundred people there. Um, and they've done bigger shows than that in the past. Like they've done like close to a thousand people, I think. Um, and their co- their big shows are constantly um, stacked. They've had Rikishi, they've had Hornswoggle, they've had yeah. all sorts of people. Um, and the actual talent they produced is kind of through the roof as well. Um, I think just because they're so far north, obviously they don't get. Um, they're kind of out with the sort of where the kind of online buzz is as much. Um, but they're a brilliant promotion. Yeah, and like it's uh, said, like when they can bring in people like Santa Morella and Rikishi and stuff like, it must be incredible for people like yourself just to need to be in the ring with Santa Morella randomly. The guy you've just seen on oh, TV, yeah. and it's just like oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, 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 it. And then suddenly him teaming with Grado, which just sounds like an incredible team. I'm going to be honest. Um, oh, aye, that was I, I. I was an extra in that match, but it was amazing. <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> That sounds incredible. Um, and then well, I noticed um, you kind of um, because obviously you stayed with PBW for a lot of the time. Yep. Um, yep. you started moving towards like the heavyweight title. Um, and it yep. seems like you had like unless from reading it, you seem to have a lot of matches with BT Gun. Just like an insane yep. like rivalry with BT Gun. Yep. It seemed. How was that to yep. like, constantly be in action against himself? Again, it was um because because I'd wrestled. BT as much on the camps. I feel as if we had really good sort of chemistry together, um, and it was always it was always just good fun. Um, so as a guy like that, you just you go in and you you just learn from the experience. Um, just kind of try and listen to him, and he kind of coaches you as he's wrestling you. Um, the guy 
probably knows more about wrestling, or sorry, the guy probably forgot more about wrestling than yeah. I'll know. <laughs> um, so no, it's again, it's just it's one of the one of the sort of right place, right time where that sort of experience is you're only going to get better for wrestling guys like that consistently. No, and then um, like you said, there was a few matches via him, um, a few everywhere total matches, um, tag team totals as well. But you were defeated him via that. Um, so yeah. it seems like it was a good rivalry via that. Um, and then I noticed here, so prior to obviously ICW does come down to England. Um, yep. So, but the first time I'd like a show, get obviously this might be wrong. Um, Absolute wrestling. Um, so oh, yeah. was that the first time you hadn't been at a company? It was like based um in England, like in England. Was that um, had you wrestled prior yeah. to that with companies down? Yeah, I no, I, th- I think it probably would have been. Um, obviously, we some of our sort of camp run you were down kind of like towards the Lake District yeah. and stuff, but like in terms of like indie shows, if you will, um, I think it probably would have been, yeah, um. I, for the ice medal, I can't remember what I've done on that show. Um, I'm not going to lie. Don't worry, uh, it's all there. Um, <laughs> so it was yourself and Aaron Echo, um, and you defeated the Lion Kings. Um, oh, yeah. With uh, I, Seb Strife, and then I'm guessing it's N- Nesareco. It's an incredible name, um, to be honest. Nesareco. Yeah. Nesareco. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that match, actually. That was quite good. I, 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 that's a wee sort of blast of the past. Um. No, that that was down Newcastle way, I think, if memory yeah, serves. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I'd completely forgot about that match actually. Okay, yeah, so it's nice uh, I can bring these back to you. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, it's because I I saw previously you had been in the UK but at Newcastle again with ICW. Um there's a few matches like you had one with DCT and the Purge and Wolfgang mm-hmm. and versus yourself, yeah. Davy Blave and Luke King Sharp. Um, yep. So, you know, uh, you had been there, but that was the first one I could see where you were actually booked on a uh, British uh, UK company. How did that come about? Um, or is it just like who's n- someone you know kind of thing? Um, so, you mean, how, how, how did I actually Yeah, how did you um, end up on the show? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so, um, so we were, we came in as part of the faction um, and... So for a good wee while, me and Lou were sort of, I don't know, kind of like the Singh brothers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just there, we interfered, and eventually we got it doing. Um, and it just it sort of moved up and up. Um, again, do you know what I mean? Like we were sort of just in the door at ICW. Lou had had a run beforehand when he was younger, but as a team, we were just in the door, and you're in with guys like Wolfgang and that. Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah. And it's just right place, right time so often. Um, again, I think it was how I actually got my first sort of um, what my first actual break in ICW was so they done a, a street fight, yeah, done a street fight, and at the Barrowlands, strangely, I sort of my main debut for ICW was at the Barrowlands, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is mental, like, yeah, it's not bad, is it? Uh, <laughs> And um, so I went for them. I went to help film something for that. Yeah. And ended up ended up using my car for something. <laughs> and while I was there, Dallas says to me, "Do you want to do a running on Sunday?" And I was like, "Ah, one hundred percent, I'd like yeah. to do a running." And then since then, it's just sort of, um, at that point, it's then a case of right. Here's the opportunity. You need to make the most of it. Um. But to actually get my foot in the door, that's just that's, that's complete. Incredible. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like like you said, like especially start off so early and just be there continuously. You can't. It's, it's not bad. I'm going to say it for yourself, is it? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then like um like the day you started coming via this, you had one for uh, I think it's called W3L. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is um yourself and TJ Rage lost to you. Uh, is that Owen? Owen G Mackey. You in G Mac, yeah, you in, you in. You in. Yeah. and um, Tim Wiley, um, yep. DW, um, which was Uncivil War Tournament Four Way Elimination, which was just had a huge who of people. The Buffet Club, which is an incredible name, yeah. uh, G Money, Rob Cage, um, uh, yourself, um, and then we had uh, BT Gun and Chris Renfrew. So, like, um, 
So was this, with being in ICW, is this how you kind of branched out, or is it just you kind of did your reps yourself and kind of got yourself around? Um, I was quite, again, I was quite lucky with a lot of my stuff, like, because by the time I started teaming with Lou, yeah. Lou had already sort of branched out to a lot of places. Okay. And then, because me and Lou were both, or still are, both so focused on the team, it tended to go down the, the route of that was what we were both pushing. So the places Lou was already in, yeah, he would put him, and that again helped me sort of get my foot in the door a lot of places. Um, and again, I think just th- thankfully the team the team worked and the team was the team's been quite successful for both of us. Oh yeah, um, like, um, as we go along, you can tell it's been quite successful as yeah. we go along. Um, yeah, after that. Um, so you ended up being the WrestleZone Tag Team Champions as well, um, yep. which you defeated Chris Archer and Mikey Vega. Um, yeah. And they rejected. Um, so at this point, like obviously, you were very trusted as a team because everyone's whacking the titles on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we think we kind of we we had a good run. We had a good run when we first came out. Um, so the team, the team really changed like over the years. Yeah. Like when we first came out, we were doing, we were doing like a mad dancing gimmick and everything. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so it was sort of more bordering on comedy. Um, and again, that's sort of I think that's how we were we were lucky that like we because of the sort of gimmick that we done, we ended up in with guys like like Grado and that. Um, and it's that's always going to be the sort of the sort of gimmick that non wrestling fans kind of gravitate to when they go to shows. Um, so no, it was it was good. Um, and obviously, like I said, I think we've we we were able to back it up once we once the sort of bell went. Um, and it was we were trusted by a lot of a lot of different promotions. Um, which was really good. And obviously, WrestleZone was a WrestleZone was one that was that was really good. Um, that's because, like I said, that's a it was a really good promotion to get involved in. Um, so that one kind of meant a lot. Yeah, and um, you kept them totals for 77 days or so that's come into this. Yeah. Um, you ended up losing them back to the rejected, um, but it was a yeah. triple threat match with uh, Kings of Catch in there as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So were you pinned, um, your tag team, or were they, was it the other team that was pinned that kind of made you lose the totals? Um, no, no, I, 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 do think, I do think we were pinned, because um, I think if memory serves, so we lost them at... I think maybe the last big show before their biggest show of the year. Yeah. And I think that we were sort of involved in the story to lead to um the rejected against Kings of Catch. Ah, okay. Um, so we were sort of involved in that story. Um and I'm pretty sure that if memory serves it might have been some all noisy Kings of Catch does beat and then the rejected stole the pin, I think, if memory serves. Um, so again, it was like for, for the start of it, we knew that we were there to get to a certain point for the story. Yeah. But the fact that we, even at that, because obviously, like you said, situations like this, people are going to look at look at this thing. They're going to see us as the champs. So it's still a good bit of trust for them to put us in and say, "Aye, that's." Because you don't want to devalue your titles. <laughs> no, definitely. And like I said, like you, you've been like a who's who's of tag team. I would understand as we go along. Um, you've been there, done that kind of thing. <laughs> Um and then like the debuts kept coming. Uh, you wrestled. I don't know if it was um Empire. I can't believe it's what who. I don't even know what that company's called. Uh, Empire Wrestling. It was literally called Empire Wrestling. Uh, oh, okay. Um, it was yourself and the Govan team, um, versus Big Lou, oh, Nixon, yeah. Oliver Barrett, and Rob, uh, Rory Coyle. Yeah. Again. 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 I'd forgot about that show. <laughs> um. Again. I think that. I think that one was in the northeast as well. Um. Oh, gosh, yeah. There seems to have been quite a lot of that. Like the northeast is quite similar to Scotland, where like there's for such a small area, there's a crazy amount of wrestling shows. Um, so there was quite often new shows springing up. Um, no, that, that that was quite good. Um, again, I can't remember much about the match. Um, mm. I remember it sort of um, it rings a bell vaguely. Um, but I would be lying if I say I could remember. Anything else about the match? No, that's fair enough. Like I said, especially if you debut in a lot of places at this point. Like uh, there was BCW as well, which yourself and Lou uh, defeated Paxo and Prince Acid. 
or sad. Yeah. Sad, that would be a sad yeah. acid. Uh, yeah. um, then you um, you ended up for wrestling for Hope as well in Nottinghamshire. Uh, yeah. Which is a, yep. uh, near me, um, basically in the Midlands. Um, yeah. And that looks like that looks like a like an incredible match. It was a, um, a summertime scramble. Um, how did you yeah. end up? How did you end up there? <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> um, I think for Hope, I ended up because that was a. I was just, if I'm thinking of the right promotion, I think, because I've only wrestled there once, am I right in saying that? I think so, yeah, that's the only one I could see on there, yeah. yeah I, I probably shouldn't have said that, because maybe I had a stinker of a man. But um, I had to, I woke up to a message from, like, like Viper, <laughs> yeah, yeah. saying that her and Jester were going down there, and for what, I don't know what had happened, but on the day of the show, they didn't have a driver, so they asked if I could drive them. They asked if I could drive them down. I said aye. I don't think I really realised how far a drive it was. <laughs> so I drove down, and to their guys' credit, they managed to sort of wangle me on the show for being their driver, yeah. and that's how I got on. It's not bad, uh, you know, that's why you should probably learn to drive, you know, you can do <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and then, like the match, so it's the Chuck Mambo Summertime Scramble. Um, so yourself, Warren Banks, Chuck Mambo, Ethan Allen, uh, Cole Kingsley, Sugar Duncanson, which is brilliant, like wrestling Sugar yeah. Duncanson, uh, Will Cruz and Tim Lee. Um, I'm going to go down to that. So, yeah, and it's just like you just kept going, like, um, a place called Re- uh, Respect Pro Live. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they've just... They just recently stopped. Aye, they ran sort of Ayrshire way. Um, aye, they, they, they ran quite frequently for a while. Yeah, um, and you faced JD Bravo. Yeah, um, again, <laughs> again, again, I can't, I can't remember it. Um, I, re- I wrestled, um, I think I wrestled Callum quite a lot yeah. for a while. Um, so when I first started training, he was one of the more the more sort of senior trainees, like he wasn't, he wasn't a trainer, but it was like he was maybe the guy that if it was your first day, he would be the one that would show you your bumps and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think I rest him quite a lot. Yeah, um, and then you were obviously you had said PW, uh, PWB tag team titles for a period. You were getting into the um, the fixture with the ICW tag team titles. I don't know if this was the first one, but um, I can see that it was yourself and Lou versus the Kinky Party, Jack Jester and Shay Shambles. Yeah, yeah. Um, we wrestled, we wrestled them a lot. Um, again, like when we first sort of broke any ICW, but we sort of had the perfect storm. Like we ended up wrestling the pugs, what felt like non-stop, but it was really good because all four of us were kind of quite new, so we were trying to raise ourselves up. So we were all kind of trying to help each other out. Um, but in amongst that, we also had matches with like Polo Promotions, with matches with the Tinky Party. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? So again, it's like you're getting that mix of you're learning from these very experienced teams, and you're also your actual sort of storyline as four of you that you're all your sole aim is to try and raise everybody up. Um, so again, it was just the sort of perfect storm for us. No, definitely. Like um, to get the reps in against people, you said like you're seeing people like Kinky Party, Grado continuously. Um. <laughs> And then I was looking to hear this. You, I need your um, information on this because uh, Cage Match has not a clue. Um, so you debuted for a place called Four GW um, in West Yorkshire. Yep. Um, yep. It was yourself and Luke King Sharp. All it says here is um, you faced Hustle and Muscle, and it just says question mark question mark, as in they don't know who Hustle and Muscle was. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hustle and Muscle, I believe, was. I know one of them was Tiger McGuigan Jr. Okay. So I, no more than cage match. I'm gonna... <laughs> I, can't, I can't quite... I'm not sure who the... I'm not sure who the partner would have been. Um, oh, that's bad, but I can't remember who that partner would have been. As I said, you At least more... I can't remember either. Yeah, literally, it just says hustle muscle and then it puts brackets, question mark. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, uh, forever, never known that team. <laughs> Um, and then a match I really wanted to bring up because it's just it sounds incredible. Um, so in 2018 you had a uh, at Fear and Loathing, 
Um, yep. You had a number one contendership six-way tables, ladders, and chairs match. And just randomly in the middle, I can see the Briscoe brothers just yep. randomly in the middle of there. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was... Um, so ICW ran the Hydro twice. Yeah. So the year before, um, we had... No, was it twice? Yeah, I think it was twice. Um, so the year before, we had a spot where we had to run out, set up a table at ringside. Yeah. The pods would come out, and us two and the pods would fight to the back. Mm. That was it. That was our big spot. <laughs> so we came out, we set up the table, the pods come out, start hitting us, the table falls down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We brawl in the back. So the whole reason we were there was to set up this table and the table didn't get set up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were distraught and we thought, oh, no, that's it. We're never going to wrestle at the Hydro and that was our one time and we've dropped the table. Um, so then the second time we managed to do it, um, being in that match was crazy because obviously you had um, like some of the names in it. You had Haskins, you had Rampage, um, you had the Briscoes, obviously. Yeah, Aston Smith in there as well, Lewis Garvin, Lodge. Oh. Incredible. So, um, so the bell went, <laughs> and for one side, um, one of the Briscoes ran at me, and for the other side, Rampage Brown ran at me. Okay. And I was, uh... there's, 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 there's no way I can go here where this is going to end well. <laughs> but, um, no, that was a, that was a surreal experience. It's one of the experiences that, looking back on it, I wish I'd took more of it in. Um, because again, like it was a hydro. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the that's the biggest venue that yeah. realistically, it's the biggest venue I'll wrestle at. Um, so I wish I'd sort of took more of the day in and not been as stressed as I was that day. Um, but that that like that's one of the experiences you you'll tell your grandkids about that. <laughs> no, definitely not the biggest gun for it. And it was just, oh, you hadn't wrote this down. I just suddenly looked and it was just skimming through and I just saw Briscoe Brothers and I didn't notice this. Yeah. Really, you know? yeah. <laughs> um, how was it to wrestle the Briscoes, like, in general? Um, well, it was, I, I don't, if memory serves, I don't think we done a huge amount with them in the match. Mm. Um, I think, obviously, the nature of the match that it is, it's a sort it's of, awesome, ma- yeah. ma- mainly a brawl and then you've got the, like, the odd spot for everybody in the match um, but it was just to actually look, they're the sort of guys that I remember when I was I'm not saying I'm not now but when I was just a wrestling fan they're the sort of guys I used to watch all the time Yeah. Um, and it's the sort of thing me and Lou like probably still to this day that would mean Lou's if we could pick a team of wrestle it would be they two um, so to actually get to technically be able to say we've wrestled them at the Hydro is it's different that's Blows your mind. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say technically about it. You did wrestle them. That night, yeah. right? so that's what it says on Cage Match. So that's uh, <laughs> that's how we accept life. Uh, um, and then, um, like I said, it was just a mixture of you were still PBW, um, thrill for life, it looks like. Yeah. Um, and um, at that stage, um, so 2019 came up, you did lose the tag team titles um, yep. after that amazing run. Um and then it was followed by like um matches with you still were fighting people like Leighton Blood a uh, Buzzard sorry uh, yeah. look of it and then um I saw a match which had just a fun match um it was yourself and T J Rage so it was still nice that you're still teaming up with T J at this point yeah um versus Martin Kirby and Sienna um, oh yeah yeah that was Target was it yeah it just seemed like a really uh, random match and I was like okay I yeah. Know. Yeah, um, no, that was good. Again, again, I'd forgot about that until you said it. No, that was good. That was, I think that was my debut for Target. Um, no, that was good. And that was my first time wrestling Kirby as well. I've been lucky enough to wrestle Kirby a few times. Um, but that's just, I I would struggle to think of anybody that could wrestle Kirby and not have fun doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun um, doing it. Aye. Um, and then it was just like, who's who via that? Um Grado was coming up a lot. You were still tr- fighting for the heavyweight title, but I don't think you ever won the PB. Uh, no, title. no, yeah. I did not. I did. Thanks for reminding me. I just, you know, <laughs> I'd just like to rub it in. Um, and then we just moving on continuously ICW, and then um, moving into 2020. Obviously, a big thing happened uh, around yeah. the world um, with yeah. COVID. 
Um, so what we normally do around this point is kind of discuss some stuff outside of wrestling. Um, not right, like, okay. Just not personal stuff, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, um, so how did you keep yourself busy during COVID? Um, so obviously it was hard to start with. So because um, round about 2019, maybe 20, the tail end of 2018, like I had, I had started running my own shows as well. Yeah. Um. Like it was, re- it was really small shows. Like maximum you're getting like a hundred people. But um, I started running my own shows and that alongside um, sort of wrestling as often. Um, I had went self-employed. Um. So obviously timing's not my strong yeah, suit. Not Christ, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Um. So again, like for the first while, I think maybe the first three four ish months um it was kind of just sitting in the house and kind of living off the savings um because i don't think it, well nobody expected it to last as long as it did um and then luckily as soon as um as soon as sort of lockdown was announced um i just kind of went back in a sort of full-time work yeah um, and i was able to cause the type of job i do like we were working right through the pandemic um, which again, it was like it was good because like, I I would have got bored sitting in the house. <laughs> um, so it kept it kept you busy, it kept you active. Um, but no, it was a it was a hard time for everybody. No, um, yeah. that was a crazy thing. It could it showed that like the, especially the UK, we weren't prepared at all for anything like that. Was it, it was just yeah. sudden sudden lockdown yeah. madness. It's uh, um, and then what we normally ask you stuff like uh, like a generalization. Um, so what music are you into like uh. <laughs> um, so I, I'd, I would really listen to a bit of everything. Um, I, I'm a big Johnny Cash fan. Yeah. I'm a big Johnny Cash fan, and also, big Taylor Swift fan. See, I like a mixture, big... just a complete mixture. Uh... Yeah. So a wee bit of everything, a wee bit of everything. That's my main two right now. <laughs> no worries. Um, so what we normally is basically. Because I um we do this um poll thing about my yep. top three artists versus the wrestlers for the top three artists. Because I got absolutely yep. shafted the first time I did this. Because uh my top three artists, I did it with a guy called Corey McRae. My top three artists are uh, Oasis, uh, Disturbed, right. and Avril Lavigne. So there is a mixture there. His right. top three artists were Elvis Presley, Queen. Ooh. And the Beatles. Mm. How was I ever going to win that? You know, <laughs> Aye, that's that, that, that's what the mega pills. Yeah, like. it's like hold on. I'm not like, that. Yeah, he challenged me, and I was like, "Oh, fair enough." And they went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so each time I try and um, survey myself, I'm two one down at the moment. I just lost to RC oh. Chaos. Um, oh. So if you had to pick a top three, who would it be? Uh, top my favorite artist of all time. Yep. Yep. Right. Ooh. Um, I'd probably have Oasis in there as well. Um, I'd go Oasis. Um, I'd go Johnny Cash. Yeah. And um, ooh, that's a hard one. Ooh, who would last? Probably Foo Fighters. See, that's that. I feel like I've already lost. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> Avril Lavigne lets me down on my scale. I feel like that's <laughs> well, very... Avril Lavigne has a solid shoot as well. I'm not gonna lie. Everybody likes something about Avril Lavigne. Yeah, no, especially a complicated era of my life. Uh, whole. Yeah. Great. Um, and then, um, are you a movie guy? Are you, uh, do you watch many movies? Oh, yeah, I love movies. Yeah, what would love... you like? Obviously, Spur at the moment. Uh, favorite, one of your favourite films, or top like three, if you have to kind of uh, delve. Mm-hmm. Top three, Pulp Fiction, mm. Shawshank Redemption, and probably Forrest Gump. See that's that is a top three. That is, you know. Like, what about you? What's your top three. Um, Kill Bill. Um, would be one of them. Um, I've got literally tattooed on my arm. Uh, no. Kill Bill. Um, it mixes because I'm what uh, Scarface is up there. I love Scarface. Mm. Um, really random. Bend it like Beckham. If you've ever watched Bend it like Beckham. I have watched Bend It Like Beckham. It's a good film. I've never heard them to put it in the top three. It's, it was but... my period of like how younger I was, and then that was just, and I was, you know, I'm a United fan as well, so it kind of out with that. Right, and, uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and then, like, there's other ones as well. Like, um, there's proper old classic ones like Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. I don't know if you've a uh, John Wayne film. I've heard of it. I've never watched it. Yeah, I've heard of it. Like, because I proper because I used to work at H and V, I delved because. 
you get discounted H and V. The amount of films that are right. awesome and stuff like that, thirty percent <laughs> off, like incredible. Nice. Um, nice. And I ended up going to Cineworld, so I just, I just watched too many. I'm gonna be honest. Um, <laughs> and are you a gamer at all? Or uh, yeah, I'm. 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 I do like playing um, games. Um, and for I'm assuming we're going for top three games. We can do that. Yeah, yeah. If we're going, uh, oh. we'll go for that round as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, am I allowed to take both Red Dead Redemptions? Yeah, you can do it in one. I can class right. it one, yeah. Right, okay, right. I'd take Red Dead Redemption. Um, ooh, um, I really liked... I can't actually remember the name. It was Alien Noir. Alien Noir, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked Alien Noir and probably The Last of Us. I've not played the second one, but the first The Last of Us was amazing. Yeah, I've not played Last of Us, so like, if people recommend me, I've just not got around yeah. to it yet. Because I'm a proper, like, I used to be, like, a FIFA, Call of Duty kind of guy. Kind yeah. Of thing, but I probably, yeah. I'm just, like, rock star games now, like yourself, like, like yeah. Red Dead, GTA, you just... Yeah. Good stories. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then, um, probably should go back to the wrestling now after that time, <laughs> no? Um, so, when did you know you were going to be, like, like back as in like um uh, to wrestling in some kind of normality because you stopped in obviously when it, uh, your last match you can see here was the IGN uh, tag team match against yourself and uh, Luke King and then your next match up oh no actually a lie here your last match was uh, yourself versus Dickie Divers at ICW and then you yep. came back to ICW against Jack Morris who's doing really well for himself at the moment yeah, uh, um, yeah. so when did you know you were going to be uh, ICW was going to start up again um, so we got a message from we got a message from Scott Reed. He was the he's one of the sort of I don't know what his actual title is, but yeah. basically the creative guys. Um, he was in the office anyway. Um, and that's normally who me and Lou sort of he normally deals with me and Lou's stuff there. We got a message for him asking if we would go back. Um, and obviously we sort of bit the hand off it. Um, because I think ICW was able to go back quicker than quite a lot of stuff because um, I don't know what it was I think potentially um, because the COVID laws or the COVID rules and stuff allowed sort of TV productions uh, okay so yeah and I think because it was going on the network it was going on a like a streaming platform with over a certain amount of streamers uh, sort of subscribers I think that's how it was sort of I think, um, yeah. but um, so it came back earlier than we sort of anticipated. Closely, it came back before crowds were allowed back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it was a, a bit of a, a bit of a strange situation to start with. Obviously, we were delighted the wrestling was back, um, but you kind of had to change what you'd done a, a, quite a lot. Um, so obviously, so much of it is sort of that crowd interaction. Um, but it was it was brilliant. It was sort of. It was the first time throughout the full pandemic that, at least personally, you kind of felt as if you were getting back to some sort of normality. Yeah, and like, um, obviously, as I said, OCW opened uh, a lot of doors for that, via that. Um, obviously, I didn't bring this up, but um, we probably mentioned, how does it feel to be like on the network regularly? Um, it's, it's brilliant. Um, obviously, it's, um, it's still, I think when you're, when you're wrestling and you're sort of chasing whatever you're chasing, um, it's easy to kind of get caught up in, right, what's next, what's next, yeah. what's next. So we probably don't stop and actually appreciate everything as much as we should. Um, or at least I know I don't. Um, but, like, again, it's sort of thing. See if I could go back and tell 10-year-old Declan yeah. <laughs> that you're going, to be on, you're going to be on some sort of WWE programme and that's, like, that's it. Do you know I mean, that's job done. Yeah, um, regular as well. It's not like just yeah. you're appearing a lot like, monthly at least. Yeah, yeah, it's as it's it's crazy. Um, especially when it's the sort of stuff. I think you can tell when something's really cool in wrestling. Yeah. When your mates that don't know wrestling mention it to you. Yeah. Um, or your mates that don't take anything to do with the the shows that you do. Um, so like when I I got like the odd text for folk saying. Oh, I've seen you on the network. Um, that's when you realise that that's cool. That is cool. The big time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is cool. That is cool. 
Um, and then you obviously, uh, obviously due to what you said in Scotland stuff, you were just wrestling mainly for ICW that year. Yeah. Um, and then um, randomly in the middle, which is just, I don't know if this was your first, was this your first ever steel cage match at this point? Uh, it, yourself it was nine nine. Uh, it wasn't. Um, I had also done, I'd done another four GW show yeah. years ago that every match on the show was in a cage. Um. But the ICW cage is this old school like that. Yeah. That that really hurts. <laughs> that one really hurts. Um, but um, but I that was it was my first and hopefully my last cage match in front of nobody. <laughs> yeah, because that be that's because yeah. that stuff hurts even more when no no <laughs> no when you're taking when you're taking these big bumps and you're getting none of the adrenaline back to the crowd. So as much as I, I really enjoyed that match, I hope I don't need to do the cage match in front of nobody again. Yeah, like it's just, I didn't even think about it that way. If there's no <laughs> adrenaline, it's just you just getting hit. <laughs> so yeah. It's just happening, isn't it? Um, and then you eventually, uh, in December, you wrestled for a place called Pro 2. Um, yep. Straight away in a title match, um, which you lost to TJ Rage, which is a, yeah. a sad thing, you know. Yep. So the master and student kind of roof. <laughs> so they've um that's quite a new promotion. Um so that was maybe the first show or the second show actually. Um and they're sort of kinda up Ayrshire way as well. Um they kinda kinda out skirt towns of Ayrshire. Yeah. Um they're they're a new promotion, sort of try to get some up and running. Um they had a good year last year. Um yeah. To be going for sort of strength to strength, so fingers crossed. The more the more good promotions we've got, the better for everybody. Yeah, it's the more for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of like you get a lot of the newer talent can get on the shows. Then if there is more talent around, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then via that, um, just like you had a work lock in. Actually, I think I'm skimming a whole year. Uh, <laughs> so, um, 2022, you were in the um, ICW Square Go. Um, what's yep. it like to be in like a like a thirty man rumble, like a raw rumble kind of essence? Um, how's that? Do you feel when yeah. you're going around that kind of thing? So most most rumbles that I've been in, um, are good fun because they're they're really sort of laid back and stuff. Um, the square go itself as um, that's a bit different because that is very sort of everything's very much planned out. Yeah. And it's like, well, because it, like, they do use that kind of old school, I guess, uh, but they use it to kickstart most of their rivalries leading into the biggest shows of the year. Yeah. Um, so it can be quite, like, my first one's stressful because you're you're not used to everything being, right, I need to, I need to be here for this, that, blah, blah. Um, but I think I've been in a few now and it is quite, um, it's good fun. Um, it is good fun. Um, and it's good to be able to sort of try and get that sort of storytelling in during the match, the matches. So, um, it's enjoyable, stressful but enjoyable. <laughs> no, it's definitely, especially going through all that. Um, and then obviously you and self and you looking sharp with kind of just a lot in the tag team title picture at that point, and you did yeah. um eventually you pick up the titles. Um, that I can see here. I don't know if this was the first or the second. Um, about three months ago. So that that was our second one. We won them. Yeah, so we can so we four and twelve days. I've wrote here at some point. So you must have yeah. won them a lot earlier than when I won there. Yeah. yeah. So we won them, but again, going back, I I can't be a hypocrite. We won them. I think, I think we won them at the square go, and it was like the second to last show before. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Before it shut down. Um. So we we had that. We won them. There was a show in Glasgow, and then we were meant to have our first defence in Newcastle, I think. Mm. Um, and then everything shut down. Um, and then, so we ended up losing them in, our, in that cage match. So that's sort of that, that big long gap. lost the mark. Yeah, we had that big long gap. Um, but, um, and then we won them back, what, three months or so ago. Um, so the title reign time will look a lot longer, but a lot of that's included in COVID. No, oh, definitely. Um, and then you obviously you picked them back up as we got into um Glasgow Grindhouse um against the Kings of the North, which is an incredible match uh to look at. 
Um, and you've only just recently lost them um, in November. Yeah. Um, was that the final match you've had recently? Because uh, that's um, the last one in cage match. Uh, so. No, so I've had, we've done one show since the yeah. sort of turn. Um, so we lost them in November, and then there was one more ICW show the end of that year, but we went on that one. Ah, okay. And then we've had one back since, but it was also like two weeks ago, so that's probably ah, why so it's not. Probably not listed because it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then that's us. That's us up to date. No, definitely. Um, so what we normally do to round off the interview is we kind of uh, we'll get to the Twitter question um, that we were asked for this. So we had one in the DMs, which I'll um, pick up now. But there was one in um, on the actual Twitter post. Um, so it's from a guy called It's Me Vaughn. Um, where does um, yourself and um, yourself and Luke King Sharp? Where do you think you're going to be going next for your quest for gold? Where would you like to appear? Basically, I think that's a general gist. Um, where would I like to appear? Um, obviously, the the kind of obvious answer is we'd want to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but the, but I mean, I don't know. Um, so me and Lou have so Lou. Lou's always wrestling in the continent. I think we'd like to branch out a bit more this year. I think we'd like to become more than a UK tag team. Yeah. We'd try and get out and about in the continent and try and where that is, we're not really first. We'd just like to sort of branch out a wee bit more. Okay. And then the last one is um, this guy, uh, I won't name him, um, but he always asks the same question. If a movie um, about your life, your career, who would play you? Oh, who'd play me? Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh, who'd play me? Colin Farrell. That that would be good. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Colin Farrell. I I reckon re- he'd have a good Scottish accent on him as well. Ah, oh, I would definitely see that. I'll be honest. Uh, that will add that to the collection of movies. Uh, um. And to round it off, um, what we do is we do kind of like a, um, I can't think of the exact words of it, um, if you could pick a wrestler, any wrestler to wrestle, um, that's um, wrestling at the moment, like a dream match kind of thing, yep. um, first alive and then either, either retired or they've passed away, who do you think you'd prefer to wrestle? Um, So, alive, I would probably go... Um, If it could be MD, I'd like to wrestle. I'd love to wrestle Kevin Nash. That's like, I'll, incredible. Like, <laughs> yeah. But it'd be awkward because I've stole all his moves. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking like a wrestler that's passed away, I don't know. Um, maybe Mr. Perfect. Um, two good picks, that is. Two different picks as well. Um, so a large again, then Mr. Perfect technician of all technicians, you know. Well, that's a good point. I don't know a lot of tech, so maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> this is your dream match. You can do what you want. In your dream match, you're literally <laughs> you're a technician master. That's what I'm <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, the roundup. So um, we've had your Twitter on the screen for the whole show, which you wouldn't see clearly. Um, is there a, what other social media do you want to flog? Um, so I've got Twitter. I don't really use Twitter that much, um, but I've got Twitter and I'm a wee bit more active on Instagram. Yeah. Um, all all the social media is just the same handle anyway. Um, so I so, both um, Twitter or Instagram are probably the main two. That I use. And, um, so yeah, go follow Kroger on those. Um, as usual, just like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below who you think we should have on. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for myself. Um, so thank you for obviously coming on. Um, I said this is someone I've wanted to get on, so it's great that you actually came on. <laughs> oh, no worries at all. Thanks for having me, mate. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Nah, no worries. Um, but yep, yeah, so bye from now. <laughs>